Saint Augustine reflects on the paradox of Christ's freedom and crucifixion. He alone was free among the dead. He alone had power to lay down his life and power to take it up again. And for us, he became both victor and victim, and victor because he was the victim. Out of slaves, he makes us your children because he was born of you and yet served us. Rightly then, is my hope fixed strongly on him. Otherwise, I should utterly despair. For my weaknesses are many and great. Indeed, they are very many and very great. But your medicine is still greater. Otherwise, we might think that your word was removed from union with us and despair of ourselves if it had not been that he was made flesh and dwelt among us.
the women come to the tomb. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulchre, and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter, and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. Thanks be to God.
John Updike presents the stark reality of Easter. Make no mistake, if he rose at all, it was as his body. If the cell's dissolution did not reverse, the molecules re-knit, the amino acids rekindle, the church will fall. It was not as the flowers each soft spring recurrent. It was not as his spirit in the mouths and fuddled eyes of the eleven apostles. It was as his flesh, ours. The same hinged thumbs and toes, the same valved heart that pierced, died, withered, decayed and then regathered out of his father's might new strength to enclose. Let us not mock God with metaphor, analogy, sidestepping transcendence, making of the event a parable, a sign painted in the faded credulity of earlier ages. Let us walk through the door. The stone is rolled back, not papier-mâché, not a stone in a story, but the vast rock of materiality that in the slow grinding of time will eclipse each of us the wide light of day. And if we will have an angel at the tomb, make it a real angel, weighty with Max Planck's quanta, vivid with hair, opaque in the dawn light, robed in real linen, spun on a definite loom. Let us not seek to make it less monstrous for our own convenience, our own sense of beauty, lest, awakened in one unthinkable hour, we are embarrassed by the miracle and crushed by remonstrance.
and power, who through the mighty resurrection of thy Son hast overcome the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to thee in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, 
that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.